Hello, it's the Reverend Justin Parker. I'm Rector of Bromfield Benefice, and although I can't be with you today because you need to be safe at school, this is a little bit of a video to talk about harvest and help to share in your harvest celebrations. I'm talking to you today from St Michael All Angels Church in Honorbury, which is very lovely, and just next door to Oni School in Honorbury. In these days, which we're thinking about coronavirus and all the worries that go with that, it's really easy to forget just how lucky we are. Are you a worrier? Well, I know I am. I worry about everything. In fact, I worry about things that I can't even remember. And sometimes I wake myself up in the middle of the night worrying that I can't remember what I should have been worrying about. But in this wonderful part of the world, we've got so much to be thankful for. And even in these days of coronavirus, when there's lots for us to worry about, it's easy for us to forget just how lucky we are and just how blessed we are by God to be where we are in the world and with the people who love us. Jesus knew that worry was a real problem. And even his disciples 2,000 years ago were worrying then. Not much has changed over those 2,000 years, has it? But this is what Jesus said to his friends, and this is a reading from the Gospel of St Matthew. Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow, and they don't reap, and they don't gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than all of those? And can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the length of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. But I tell you, even King Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed as well as one of these. And if God clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore don't worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But work first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. That's a really helpful reading. It reminds us to look at the natural world and all the beauties outside. And living in Shropshire, we are really lucky. Look at the fields. Walk around the hedgerows. Perhaps if you've got a dog, take your dog for a walk with your family. Go and have a look at just how beautiful the countryside is. You and I are really lucky. Today we woke up safe and with people who loved us. And you went to school and saw teachers who really cared for you and teaching assistants who were bothered about you and made sure that you were safe and happy. And we aren't hungry and when we turn on the tap there's fresh water for us. We're so much luckier than lots of people in the rest of the world. When we're worried, the worry can become so big that it blots out everything else. What we need to do is get something called perspective. That means to understand how the worry fits into the rest of our lives. If I come over here and put my thumb really close to the screen, well, look at it. My thumb is not nearly as big as my head. Well, we know that's not true, don't we? It's a nonsense. What's happened is we've lost perspective. The thumb has come really close to the screen and my head was further away, so the thumb looked bigger than my head. And that's what happens with our worries as well. They get so big that they forget, that we forget rather, to understand just how they fit into the rest of our lives. So what's the antidote to that? What's the answer? It's really simple. To count our blessings. What do I mean by that? Well, to stop for a moment and to think 
about the things that are precious to us and make us happy. Perhaps our mum, dad or carer, those who look after us. Perhaps our teacher who looks after us. Perhaps it's our pets. Perhaps it's our home. It could be your favourite television programme. Why not just spend a few moments and sit down with a piece of paper and make a list of the things that make you really happy and the things for which you need to be thankful to God. And when you've done that, suddenly you'll see how many wonderful things there are. Then think about the things about which you're a bit worried. There aren't really that many of them. And when you put them next to the things that are wonderful and blessings and make you happy, you will see just how small those worries are. God made this wonderful world, all the things that are beautiful in it, for you and me to enjoy and to care for and to look after. God gives us all these things because he loves us and cares for us. So put that on your list of blessings too. Look at the lilies of the field. Look at the animals. Look at the beautiful birds in the air. Just as the reading from Matthew's Gospel said, since God made them and loves them, how much more does he love you? So let's pray for a moment and think about this time of year, harvest, when there's so much to be thankful for. Creator God, from the very moment your spirit hovered over the waters of this earth, we were part of a vision held lovingly in your heart. From the moment you spoke and separated darkness from light, you created space where we might one day walk. From the moment your joy filled the green and living things, your beauty was revealed for us to taste and see. Creator God, for this world, the beauty and majesty, passion and artistry, a green and pleasant place, we praise your mighty name. So let's thank God for the rich soil of the countryside, the drills drawn straight across the field, for the green corn springing out of the earth and the warm sweetness of the rain. For the power of tractors and for all the machines that ease our labour and for the skill of the farmers and those who gather the harvest for all who work on the farms and in the fields for all their hope and their courage in days of difficulty and disappointment for those who often unnoticed and unsung provide us with the means of life for those who work in the shops those who bring us and sell us the food. For the salvation of town and country, we thank you, God. For all who take craftsmen's pride in the work they do and know the satisfaction and happiness that comes from a hard day's work well done. And for the bread given us as our daily food, for the bread of life which we receive from God, for the water which sustains us, we thank God. Now let's pray for the Queen and all the leaders of the nations. May they have the will to promote justice and freedom, be honest and decent, and care for your people. To the words, Lord, in your mercy, will you say, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For those who work to earn their daily bread, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those without work or resources, that their hearts may be hopeful, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those with no family or home, that they may find love and help and protection, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering, in body, mind or spirit, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for ourselves, and for our families and friends, for all who love us and care for us, 
bless and guide, protect us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring all our prayers to God by saying the family prayer which Jesus taught his friends. We call it the Lord's Prayer. And we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, just in a moment, I wish you a happy harvest. Rejoice in all the world around you and be happy. See the blessings of God in all you do and all you say. So bow your heads and pray to God for a blessing. May God, our Creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, give you his care and his love and increase the harvest of your love in the world. God the Father who created the world, make you wise stewards of his world. God the Son who redeemed the world, inspire you to go out and work for the good of everyone. God the Holy Spirit, whose breath fills the whole of creation, help you to bring forth the fruits of love, joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, and those who love you, this day and forevermore. Amen.